Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video, we had two launches of our lunar mission and both failed miserably. The first one with Sebastian, I think, failed because there is an issue with the pod and its heat tolerance. And actually, in particular, the bottom node on it, uh, the one that the heat shield is attaching to. Yep, let's get that bit there. The second one was probably because I shouldn't have launched that mission in the first place, given that I was still distraught at the loss of Sebastian and I wasn't thinking straight. And of course, we ended up with too little fuel cell propellant. And the reason why there was an imbalance between hydrogen and oxygen, I think, is because the fuel cell uses a different mix than the actual engine does. So that was probably the reason there. But Yes, so originally this Mark 1-3 pod has a uh, node that's buried in it a little bit. You can sort of see the node here. The fact that that came off upside down also worries me, but uh, uh, you can see if we just attach... I tweaked the heat shield down in order to compensate for that, but it naturally goes on like this. Now, maybe we should just... Somebody suggested that we should just clip it in. Um, and maybe maybe that's a solution but i've also adjusted this this had the same node location as before because it was a craft file but i also have actually gone into the configuration file and moved the node so it's like this now now which solution works the one where i don't tweak the heat shield out and just leave it like this because maybe there's a reason why they put the node where it was uh, or is pulling the node out the best idea and we just want it like this. It's a little bit difficult to say. So I think this is basically a mod issue and not something that's you know mission related. It's a matter of where the attachment node is. It's not like it's a matter of our mission design. So I think I'm going to test this in sandbox, not with the simulation function or anything like that. Um, and I normally wouldn't use the simulation function. So uh, just taking a look at the configuration. Uh, the issue is this is a restock thing. I assume this is the restock pod. I don't use restock normally. Uh, so I assume that this has been modified by restock because it seems to have been, you know, it's replacing the model here. But what it had originally was the node stack bottom was moved to this location. The default Mark III pod location is this number right here. And what I've done is just comment out the move, move of the stack node to uh, the inner node, inner point. Now, again, I haven't used restock, so I don't know. Maybe the model isn't loading right or something like that. There's a lot of configurations modifying other configurations. After all, this restock configuration is in turn being modified by the realism overhaul configuration and so is the original mark one pod but the original uh, the realism overhaul configuration is being told not to modify the original mark one dash three pod if there's restock but it's all complicated so something could be messing with it after the fact that i don't know about but it seems like just commenting this out gets us the old node and what i'm going to do is we're going to try and quickly test this in sandbox and see what works so uh, I'll try to make the video as short as possible that aspect of the video as short as possible and we'll come up with a solution and move on however if uh, if neither of these work there is uh, option B the option B is the aforementioned pod that I created for the Japanese series because I didn't want to use the mark one pod for that and this is meant to be an alternative to the rather odd looking advanced command pod. And so it has all the stats of the advanced command pod, except it doesn't have the ablator on it. This actually has the heat shield built in. Uh, this one does not, that's the only difference. And I've checked to make sure that that's it. Uh, in relation to, it's sort of like a big Gemini, uh, more or less, uh, this is Gemini. It's just a more lunar, friendly Gemini. It's interesting that as far as heat tolerances are concerned, the advanced command pod here has uh, not only an internal temp of 1073, but also a skin max temp of 3373 when our Mark 1 pod has less. I don't know why, but it seems like that's more 
lunar friendly than this is, right? Uh, I don't know what the numbers are for the Apollo Command Module there. The Com Apollo Command Module only has 2,000 skin max temp, so it's much worse than either one, which is curious. Uh, as far as Gemini is concerned, that has 2,000 as well, so I don't know why the Advanced Command Pod has 3,373. I guess that's why it's advanced, but this shape is nowhere near what you would expect to have as something that's that friendly. Uh, the D2, the set module, I can see why people like it. That's 3,600 right there. So, yeah, of course, a part of it is probably because the heat shield is built in, but still. Okay, but that's plan B. Uh, we'll just have two people in there, and we'll try to do it that way, if it forces me to. But let's go to Sandbox and see which one of these fixes actually works. So first, the uh, old node position, as saved by the craft file, and I don't know why the heat shield flips around like that, but anyway, that's suspicious too. But we're gonna keep it a little bit oversized, but not this oversized. And we're just gonna put it on the original position. So it looks like this, and you know, in a way it should look like this. So maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but at this point it clips. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I don't think that, like, this is going to be the right way to go, but... Um, somebody said, said that tweaking it up a little bit helped, so we'll try it. Okay, it is very much dusk, and we have three crew. And we have SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. Alright, so we do have the scent mode on. Ignore the explosions of the service module. It ended up a little bit close this time. I want the control though. Ah, uh, this is making it hard for me to get to it. Okay, so control pitch off. Roll, yes. Okay, we're coming in. Uh, we still got overheating. Okay, where the heck? Let me turn the set mode off. I mean, of course we're supposed to be able to use the set mode. I did not accept this. Uh, Alright, we're turning the set mode off and we'll see what kind of g-forces they experience like this. To be honest, the uh, g-forces are not too bad at this point. So yeah, maybe I'll just not have the scent mode. But really, it's a problem with the pod. Obviously, these pods are supposed to be able to do that. But we'll try the other version with the moved node. Back to where the Mark 1-3 command pod is supposed to have it. I sort of feel like if the scent mode isn't necessary for this, there's something wrong, right? Why is it like this? It wasn't like this in previous versions. Previous versions it would really get you with the G-forces. But I mean, 7G's is a lot, but still. It's not a light pod either for this surface area, you know, 6.6 .6 tons. But this surface area is a fair amount. Okay, well we really don't need the rest, that's not what we're testing. Okay, so I put all the accoutrement back on the top, and this is the one with the node like that, and it attaches the heat shield like that. I won't change the size of the heat shield, even though it's super sticking out right now, and I'm not gonna tweak it up. So, those are the rules. Okay, for some reason it didn't put any kerbals in this one. Uh, we did revert the previous mission, so I guess they got stuck in the other pod in the VAB somehow, and we only had three hired. Uh, that shouldn't make any difference. 
Uh, I'll have to just pay attention to comms a bit or turn it off. But SAS is on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. I guess we did lose comms. Well, I'll just have to leave it to its own devices, which seems a bit wayward. I don't know if I can still turn that pitch control off. Seems like I can. Well, surface module destruction. We're tilting quite a lot. Same 20 degree COM offset. I don't know if I can alter the CO. Oh, it is overheating though. Um, let me go back to 20. It overheated a little bit. Oh, okay, no, it's definitely still got a problem. Well, what can we do? Turn it off and on again. Yeah, so it's on now. It just really needs a brief sort of tilt back or something. It's on now, but it's not overheating. Now, well, now it's got a little bit. Uh, real lifting re-entry is at a much greater angle than this. That's why 100% is, you know, over there. I mean, its pods are supposed to be able to do much more than this. Well, I give up. I mean, it doesn't seem like descent mode is useful at all either. What's the point of the lifting re-entry anyway? I guess maybe for a more precision landing, but... I thought uh, mitigating g-forces was supposed to be a thing, but clearly... Uh, Something about this is different. Okay, secondary drop. Possibly more G-force here than last time. Uh, no, about the same, about 7 Gs. Okay, well it's on parachutes and the conclusion is neither solution seems to work. As far as just keeping the pod from risking overheating, even with an oversized heat shield, as long as there's any use of the COM offset, but it turns out the COM offset is completely useless anyway, so we might as well not use it. I mean, well, I, I want to go back to career now. So we're back in career mode, and I guess the upshot is I'm not going to be trying to do the lifting re-entry thing anymore. The COM offset is clearly dangerous. I don't know if that will solve our, all of our problems. It just seems like turning it off keeps it safe, but uh, it shouldn't, right? I mean, it's ironic because it was with my previous playthroughs of RP0 and RP1 that commenters insisted that I use the COM offset and lifting entry in order to control the descent, make the g-forces nicer for my kerbals, and also prevent a skip out. That often happened with me. I didn't mind skipping out. I always managed to recover it that way. Uh, but And we didn't want to go any lower in the atmosphere because then it really would burn up. So we would skip out and then come around and come back in. But then, um, well, I started using the COM offset to do a controlled re-entry with the lifting stuff. And commenters insisted on me doing that and they were right of course NASA does do that with the lunar missions with both Apollo and Orion and so we should do that but apparently it's dangerous now so uh, there goes that idea uh, many years of development of these techniques has uh, been shot up <laughs> and yeah well uh, I, I look forward to some reasoning for this because of course this is not realistic at this point right we are not we're not experiencing the realisms that we were promised when it comes to the return journey here uh, we are supposed to be able to do the lifting re-entry we're supposed to use the com offset 
and we neither need to nor is it safe to at this point so something needs to be fixed there we'll deal with that later because it's actually our jupiter mission that's going to take our attention first it's going to take too long to build that i do wonder in this version how descent mode would work with my own pods we'll have to test that separately but i'll do that in the sandbox because that's mod testing so, we will focus on the Jupiter mission and hope we can get some flybys of Jupiter's moons. Oh, uh, people had uh, commented on why don't I just train them both at the same time or all of them at the same time. First of all, it's because we get them at different times. Uh, but in this case, it was much closer. Second of all, um, it's so that we can sta stagger them, right? Because w if one is finished with the mission, then the other one can go. Uh, if for some reason we didn't complete the mission, we might want the... And, and there's a whole downtime issue. So once they complete the mission one way or another, they'll need some downtime. And so the other person can sort of stagger off. And at this point, we don't want to risk more than one Kerbal at a time anyway. We don't want both of them going on the same mission. Uh, really, really, we don't want both of them going on the same mission, even though the science requires it. For now, we're not going to put two of them on the same mission. So... But the main thing was to stagger them, and this was a deliberate thing, in order to make sure that we always have one ready. Because the other one might be cooling down, or might have lapsed in their mission training, and it's no good having both of them lapse in their mission training, or cooling down at the same time. But yeah, uh, we are going to do the Apollo training for Muhammad here. And I'll wait until April. Hopefully it'll last until May. 30th or something like that. Um, we can't build it any faster, so... Oh, we finished an orbital perturbation experiment there. 200 credits, finally. But I think I'm gonna... reduce our... research staff even more. Okay, our probe is now within the orbit of Callisto, and we will pay attention to it. I guess we should get a nice shot here. Uh, it is pointing in the wrong direction, though. The dish obviously should be pointed towards the sun, which is where Earth is. I guess we'll turn. Could throw things off, though. Okay, there we go. That looks more legit. The cloud layers are sort of moving at different speeds on Jupiter. That's fancy. Take a look at that. Then we got some visible imaging of the low equatorial bands, apparently. Okay, big mission. Oh, we got some mass spectrometry for Jupiter Space Low finished. Okay, well, we could use the RCS, but let's not. Staging. And ignition. Oh, see, see it's showing the Ganymede encounter there. Okay, let's get rid of that one too. It's not even showing a Callisto encounter. Okay, right there. Let's just try that. Okay, it's just not trying to, it's just trying to not show it to me there. Okay. Then at Apoapsis in five days we get the Callisto encounter. Uh, okay, well I don't know how that works, but we got a Callisto encounter, but it has to be close enough. That's not close enough. Oh well, that should be low over. And that's pretty equatorial, so it shouldn't throw our inclination off too much. There's that, but if we set Ganymede as a target, we don't seem to get that. More troubling is that our encounter with Callisto currently seems to put us suborbital around Jupiter. But we'll deal with that when we get to that. Alright, so, well, we're facing the sun pretty well here, so we can just time warp and we'll get our sunlight. Let's go to Apoapsis. 
Nine degrees. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to alter this so that we don't have nine degrees coming of relative inclination with Ganymede coming out of this. No, that would be much better. Point two. Okay, so with this burn 217 and it being a little bit more complicated, we get the Callisto flyby and we do not crash into Jupiter. And but our inclination is still messed up. So let's try and fix that. Okay, we'll we'll just take this. I think the setup for Ganymede is not too bad and Again, I'd rather not have a Jupiter periapsis that's crashing into the surface, so let us finagle ourselves a Callisto flyby here. Oh, of course it's not going to show it to me. <laughs> uh, come on. That's not what you promised. Okay, that's what I want. Well, let's hope it works. This does leave us with a negative periapsis around Jupiter, but darn it, I just wanted to minimize the inclination with Ganymede so that we have a better chance of an encounter with it. And also I wanted a low periapsis around Callisto, of course. Now that's the low periapsis. Uh, but the uh, inclination with Ganymede is not what was advertised. Also, I can't see any encounter with Ganymede right now. So after Callisto, we have a maneuver to save ourselves and minimize inclination with Ganymede. And maybe that's the best thing to do. I think we'll try for that. Uh, it doesn't get us an encounter with Ganymede, and it won't leave us much Delta V, but about 200. So, not horrible. There's Callisto. Yeah, it's not liking our orientation right now, but for now, we'll keep it this way. Okay, we got our Callisto flyby. It is recharging right now. Hmm. At this time, Warp it has a power draw. Oh, same here. Oh, whoa, it just suddenly phased into a different sort of texture. And phased out. Hopefully we got some neater science from that. Yeah, uh, Callisto Space Low got transmitted, temperature scan, and pressure scan. So that was Callisto. Oop. And we will attempt this correction. That periapsis is way lower than I thought it was. No wonders it's taking 681 to save us. Uh... Well, I hope we got the node right. Um, no, something's gone wrong here. It's making us, now it's making us more smacking into Jupiter. It messed up the node somehow. But this is the same deal. Okay, now back to that one. And we'll do this right now, it should have the right effect. It keeps wanting to switch it over there. The node was over here, but now it wants to be over there. But that's not right. They'll have the practically opposite effect. So I'm just going to get rid of the node. we got to see the descending node and our periapsis. That's all we're worried about. No, that's outside of Jupiter's atmosphere. I think we'll take that for now. Let's see if we can plot something at Jupiter periapsis to phase with Ganymede. Oh, wait. I'll take Europa. Okay, we've got Europa. 
potential Europa. Well, we'll do that. We've got the Europa contract as well, so that'll be fine. Okay, Jupiter Periapsis again. Okay, ignition. Okay, let's see what we can do to minimize it. Okay, that's all inclination right there. Okay, Europa Periapsis. Okay, well, that's basically what we wanted. We have 66 left. After passing by Europa, we'll still have a safe Jupiter Periapsis. And we're probably not that far off from Ganymede. 66 doesn't seem like enough, but we'll see. Let's just focus on Europa first. Here comes Europa. Yep. And science is happening. Slight imbalance between MH Mon3 and Helium for some reason. I guess maybe the mix that the RCS thrusters use is different than the main engine. I thought they were all sort of based on the same sort of configuration for it though. It's a bit weird. Well, Europa flyby complete. And 66 meters per second get us Ganymede? Oh, that seems promising, doesn't it? There we go. Uh, so we just need to correct inclination a little bit. And then... Well, we don't have that much. So we'll correct what we can, and that'll get us maybe within 20,000 kilometers, but not a close pass. But it wants 20,000 kilometers, and maybe we can get that with what we've got. We'll have to be careful, though. Okay. Burning. And we'll see if we need to do any more with the RCS. That doesn't benefit that much. So we'll just go over there and take this. We are recharging. Not the best position for our solar panels, but I don't want to turn it. And we have a Jupiter periapsis. Well, we're flipping around and around anyway. Here we go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gosh, that little pop-up caused me to not be able to come out of time warp right there. It was Apollo training mission complete pop-up. That's dangerous. Okay, we are in Ganymede space. Definitely uncrewed. Where's Ganymede? There's Ganymede. But we're not getting anywhere close to it. It's satisfied. We did all three. We didn't pick up the IO one. We don't have any more Delta V. We just barely made it. So, I think I think I'll wrap it up on a positive note. Having flown by three of the moons of Jupiter seems like a good deal. Probably best if I didn't do any crude stuff in the career mode this time around. And we'll continue to contemplate that situation as necessary. But as I leave this flipping around and around because we don't need to control it anymore, it's done its job. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.